Welcome to another video of Excel Academy. In this video, we are going to discuss about the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016 and especially about the IBBI, the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India. This is really important for your exams and there is high chance they may ask this in your exam. Before we move ahead, if you are coming here for the first time, please subscribe to our channel Excel Academy and press the bell icon for regular updates. Moving back to our topic, we will be discussing the institutional framework of IBBI. This is very important for exam of CS executive and CS professional program. It is in multiple subjects, not just in company law. For instance, corporate restructuring in our company secretary professional program. Yes. So what is IBBI? It is the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Board of India. We know that. Let us try to understand the role of IBBI which they may ask in your exam. The first important role of IBBI is it is a regulatory body. So it has regulatory oversight over insolvency professionals, the IPAs, that is the insolvency professional agencies and information utilities. What is information utilities? I will be telling little later in this video. And the second important thing is enforcement of rules. There are multiple rules in the insolvency and bankruptcy code. In this, the rules relating to corporate insolvency, liquidation, it could be corporate liquidation and individual bankruptcy also. So the IBBI is the body which has to enforce that these rules are followed properly. And the third important thing is that the IBBI acts like the pillar of the code. It is a very integral part of the Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code 2016. It is a code. It has all the matters relating to insolvency and bankruptcy. That is why it is called as a code. So what IBBI essentially does is it puts the code in motion. Without that, it is very difficult. Now, let us try to understand another question which they may ask in exam. Organizational structure of IBBI. So IBBI we should know is set up under section 188 subsection 1 of the insolvency and bankruptcy code. Yes. What is this body? There are totally 10 members. In these 10 members we should have one chairman, three members of the central government, one member which is nominated by the Reserve Bank of India. It has to be an ex officio member and five members who are nominated by the central government and in these five members three have to be whole time members they cannot be part time members or for honorarium they have to be whole time members what these whole time members do i will tell you a little later yes the research and regulation the registration and monitoring the administrative law these are the three wings of the IBBI. So if somebody asks you what are the three wings of IBBI, it can be broadly classified into these three. Research regulation, registration monitoring and administrative law. Okay, now let us try to understand the functions of the IBBI. They may even ask one separate question relating to functions of IBBI. So section 196 of the IBC talks about the functions. What are these? We are going to discuss the main functions. There are many functions, the main which you have to write in exam. The first function is to register the insolvency professional agencies, the insolvency professionals and also the information utilities. Earlier I told you what is information utilities. I will tell you information utilities is nothing but like a repository or one body which stores all the information relating to any loans or any other uh, credit which is taken by the banks etc. So recently in fact there was the national e-governance body or the company which was floated as the first insolvent as the first information utility under this code. Now moving on, moving on to the second point. So IBBI, the second function is to set standards of functioning of these three things that is IPA, Insolvency Professional Agencies. In fact, our CS Institute has one uh, company ICSI IPA. 
that is one there are also by ca institute also then insolvency professionals and information utilities so ibbi has to set the standards of functioning then set the minimum curriculum for the insolvency professional exams so ibbi has to set the curriculum and the exam will be conducted by either something like icsi ipa or any other insolvency professional agency but curriculum is by ibbi then inspect inspections and investigations of these three bodies is the fourth function of ibbi the fifth function is regulations for the information utilities this is very very important so information utilities it is having all the data so how they should collect the data what are the safeguards they should take etc should be set by the ibbi for matters relating to collection and storing the data by the information utilities then the sixth point maintenance of records of the ibc cases so the function of the ibbi is to maintain records of all the insolvency and bankruptcy cases and to disseminate information about these cases to the general public so they have to give the information about these cases to the general public then the seventh one is mechanism for grievance and to pass orders so the function of ibbi is to set a mechanism or set a procedure about what are the problems people are facing with insolvency professionals or the agencies or the information utilities so suppose there is a company secretary or a chartered accountant who is acting as a inf insolvency professional they did not do their job properly so the client can complain and the procedure for this complaint has to be set forth by the insolvency and bankruptcy board of india so this was the short uh, 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 summary of our insolvency bankruptcy board of india please like share and comment on this particular video tell us what you think about the ibbi and please subscribe to our channel excel academy for more updates relating to the company secretary call till then please do watch our other videos